people in China slowly get back to work, questions remain whether the country's economy will quickly bounce back. How is the Chinese regime pushing its propaganda narrative, twisting a research paper published by U.S. scientists to claim that the CCP virus is not from Wuhan? And in the U.S., a CCP virus death toll has exceeded 4,000, many of them taking place in New York, where the city's governor announcing today he plans to do more to stem the spread of the virus. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. After pressure from inside and outside China, the regime has now begun publishing asymptomatic patients, but they still won't be included in the country's confirmed cases. This helps keep its number of cases artificially low. All other major countries count asymptomatic patients as confirmed cases. After all, they have the virus and can even pass it on to others. But China has refused to do so. A Chinese CDC report released today say there have been around 1,500 asymptomatic patients in China since the outbreak began. Even though China is reporting the figure now, it seems to be underreported like China's other numbers. A professor of infectious disease in Japan says around 30 percent of CCP virus patients are asymptomatic. So even if we take the CCP's underreported official figure of 80,000 confirmed cases, there should be tens of thousands of asymptomatic patients in China. The South China Morning Post obtained a classified document that says more than 43,000 people in China had tested positive without immediate symptoms by the end of February. This seems closer to the true figure. And Chinese authorities have locked down a county in Henan province in an effort to stop a second outbreak. All businesses need to close. This does not include supermarkets, hospitals, gas stations, drugstores or hotels. 600,000 will need to stay home. Anyone who wants to enter or leave needs a special government pass. The notice comes days after a woman was diagnosed with the virus after coming in contact with asymptomatic patients. This is the first time Chinese officials have placed an area under quarantine since announcing lockdowns would be lifted nationwide next week. Wuhan, where the virus first appeared, is set to lift its lockdown next Wednesday. The city has been locked down for two and a half months. China says the epidemic there is under control, but residents tell a different story. Officials are still urging people to exercise caution and wear masks when going out. A residential community is back under lockdown after a person with a green health coat turned red, meaning the person has virus symptoms or has been in contact with a confirmed case. Before he could be quarantined, the person ran away, so officials locked down the community. Many people inside are now panicking and fear a second outbreak. On Tuesday, a video on Chinese social media shows someone with a fever riding a bus in Wuhan. A propaganda department in Wuhan responded, saying the person had a normal body temperature and the thermometer was defective. But netizens asked why the thermometer worked okay when it checked other travelers on the bus. Citizens in China are angry at working conditions. They say funds meant for them have been embezzled by authorities. Protesters in Wuhan complaining that during the outbreak, not only were they not given any financial relief, but officials even embezzled money for relief aid. A source on the ground tells us the ordinary people haven't received a dime from the government. Others say what little subsidies are offered are only enough to pay the rent. It's not enough for survival. Chinese telecoms giant Huawei was sanctioned by the U.S. last year. The chairman announced on Tuesday that if the U.S. does not lift sanctions soon, the Chinese regime will retaliate. Adjunct senior fellow at Center for a New American Security Eric Sayers tweeted on Tuesday, I am confused. Huawei claims they are independent and not beholden to any government. But when under pressure, they threaten Beijing will take countermeasures on their behalf. So aren't they an extension of the CCP? The chairman of Huawei added that 2020 will be a challenging year for the company. The company's goal is to survive. So what are these challenges? On top of sanctions from the U.S., it stems also from the pandemic and a weakening global market. 
Taiwan's president announcing today Taiwan will donate 10 million masks to countries hardest hit by the pandemic. Taiwan is the world's second largest mask manufacturer. Two million masks will go to the U.S., seven million to the EU, and one million to other countries. But a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman says the CCP isn't happy about Taiwan's donations. And accuses Taiwan of using the pandemic for political benefit. This as the CCP praises itself for selling medical supplies to other countries. Many expected Taiwan to be hit second hardest by the outbreak. It's China's neighbor after all. But Taiwan has only 329 cases and five deaths so far. Residents say it's because Taiwan didn't trust the CCP's information on the outbreak. As people in China slowly get back to work, questions remain whether the country's economy will quickly bounce back. NTD's Catherine Wen takes us through some of the challenges facing the world's second largest economy. Back to work, but with no work to do. Many factories in China are facing this reality, and some are even closing their doors. There is no sign of activity here at an empty manufacturing factory. In an idling clothing factory, the person recording the video is saying they just worked less than a month and now they have been given three months leave. And this electronics company in Hangzhou is asking people to quit voluntarily. The CCP virus has dealt the Chinese economy a double blow. First was the disruption of the outbreak, now the virus has spread to other countries and caused severe damage. Customers in the U.S. and Europe are buying less from China. So right now, they reopen the factory, but they can order. Many economists now predict the Chinese economy will shrink in the first quarter. According to official numbers, China's exports in the first two months of this year went down just over 17 percent. And UCLA economist William Yu says as long as the world is still struggling to contain the virus, the recovery in China won't be easy, since exports remain important for the economy. So they have been uh, seeing a very bad uh, first quarter, and I I think they are going to see the very bad second quarter as well. According to a March survey of U.S. companies in China, 40 percent of them still want to keep the same investment in China. But for smaller companies, nearly half want to cut investment. You said in addition to the virus's disruption, China's economy has its existing troubles. On top of that, uh, Chinese economy uh, was already in the same kind of shaky uh, ground already uh, before this uh, coronavirus happened uh, because of the uh, uh, years of this uh, overinvestment, housing bubble, and rising debt. Also, now that restrictions are eased throughout the country, there is a possible second wave of outbreak. According to you, this CCP virus pandemic could be a turning point. He says China's status as the world's factory is going to change, and businesses will move production closer to home. Staying in China, state media is twisting a research paper published by U.S. scientists. It's using the paper to claim that the CCP virus is not from Wuhan. NTD Xu and Rong has more. Chinese state-run media have been trying to distance the origin and spread of the CCP virus from the Chinese regime. One state-run media article published on March 29th claimed that an American scientist confirmed that Wuhan isn't the origin of the pandemic. The article cited an interview done by ABC News. The media outlet spoke with Dr. Robert Gary, one of the authors of the proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2 study. ABC's article says that while many believe the virus originated at a fish market in Wuhan, China, Gary said that is also a misconception. The article adds that, according to Gary, our analysis and others too point to an earlier origin than that. There were definitely cases there, but that wasn't the origin of the virus. CCTV mistranslated a sentence, writing that Dr. Gary said there were definitely cases in Wuhan, but Wuhan isn't the origin of the coronavirus. The original article refers to the fish market in Wuhan, but the CCTV article twisted the translation, turning it into the city of Wuhan. Since the virus began to spread globally, the Chinese regime has begun pushing its new propaganda narrative, one about the origin of the virus. But this isn't the only way the Chinese regime spreads its narrative. 
One study released on March 26th says that China is using thousands of fake and hijacked Twitter accounts to carry out its disinformation campaign surrounding the CCP virus. On March 21st, the Global Times linked the origin of coronavirus with Italy after misquoting NPR's interview with Milan professor Giuseppe Ramuzzi. After the article went viral, the professor responded saying, there is no doubt the virus came from China. He added that this was a textbook example on how scientific information can be manipulated for propaganda reasons. The same tactic was used on March 12th, when Zhao Lijian, a spokesperson for China's foreign ministry, promoted a mistranslated video. The clip wrongly claimed the United States admitted that the virus came from the U.S. Reporting by Xu Wenrong, NTD News. A Shanghai resident said the ruling party is the real virus plaguing China. He told us authorities have tightened censorship and he is often harassed by the police. NTD's Juliet Song reports. Mr. Qin is a resident in Shanghai, China's biggest city and a major commercial hub. He said Chinese authorities have tightened their grip on censorship. People who post news about the virus on social media might be arrested or their accounts could be cancelled. Two weeks ago, the police warned us not to post rumors. To protect Tin's identity, we've twisted his voice. He said he's monitored by two policemen. Tin thinks the Chinese Communist Party, which he calls a virus, is the real problem in China, more than the novel coronavirus. This Chinese Communist Party virus has been going on for 70 years. When can it be eliminated? Chinese authorities claim the virus outbreak is under control and urge different regions to resume work. But Mr. Yin, another Shanghai resident, believes otherwise. Think about it. The schools are not open, the two sessions are delayed. The outbreak for sure hasn't improved. If the situation had really gotten better, the schools would reopen. In China, while schools in some regions have reopened, Shanghai's remain closed. In China's top annual political meeting, two sessions has been postponed. For Yin, these are more reliable criteria than the claims of the regime. The day-to-day -day life seems to be pretty peaceful. I haven't seen virus infections around me. It's hard to tell what's really happening. If the government wants to lie, they have their means. They can hide the truth from the masses. Shanghai authorities have been reporting zero new infections in the city since mid-March, claiming the new confirmed cases are all imported. Yin questions if that's really the case. Authorities have been reporting zero new infections in Shanghai, but it's unlikely. There should be several cases here and there, especially places like Wuhan. How come the new infection number is zero? Wuhan authorities have been reporting zero or single digits of virus infections. Mr. Yin doesn't trust the numbers. He said patients discharged from the makeshift hospitals can still be virus carriers, and there could also be asymptomatic cases. Right now, he avoids leaving his home as much as possible, even though local preventative measures have eased. Reporting by Iru and Juliet Song, NTD News, New York. The president sending his vice president to a Walmart distribution center in Virginia today. Pence thanking the staff for their commitment and reassuring them the U.S. would get through the outbreak. The vice president visiting a Walmart distribution center in Virginia Wednesday morning, thanking employees for continuing to work during the pandemic. Team 7016 Gville Walmart distribution center, thank you for doing a great job for keeping food on the table for the American people. Walmart CEO walked Pence through the center. No handshakes allowed, but the VP did greet some of the workers. What's your name? My name is Tim. Tim Smith. Tim, Mike Pence. Virginia's on lockdown at the moment, but since Walmart keeps food on the table, it's an essential business. We know you're on the front lines, and the fact that you're showing up every day you're rolling your sleeves up and you're doing the work. Says an awful lot about each and every one of you. Private Enterprise has been eager to help during the outbreak. 
Automakers like Ford are making ventilators, MyPillow are making face masks, and workers at companies like Walmart are risking infection to keep the society moving. And in the U.S., the CCP virus death toll has exceeded 4,000, many of them taking place in New York. NTD's Miguel Moreno has more on that. On Wednesday, the virus's death toll in the U.S. surpassed 4,000. The Coronavirus Task Force projected that anywhere from 100,000 to 250,000 people may die before the pandemic is over. And Vice President Mike Pence said the U.S. could have been better off if China was more transparent. Uh, we could have been better off if China had been more forthcoming. And the spread has reached jails, homeless shelters, and also military vessels like the USS Theodore Roosevelt in Guam. There are less than 100 personnel who have tested positive so far. None of them are seriously ill, and not one of them has been hospitalized to date. Modley confirmed that nearly 1,000 members have been evacuated, with thousands more to be evacuated in the upcoming days. And to assist the U.S. in the pandemic, Russia has sent medical equipment expected to arrive Wednesday night. A U.S. official said 60 tons of ventilators, masks, and other items were on the way. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. Governor Andrew Cuomo announced earlier that he will take further measures to halt the spread of the virus. New York State is still by far the state with the highest number of infections. Governor Cuomo announced today that New York State may reach the peak at the end of April. The state government is expecting the death toll to keep rising. That model suggests 16,000 New Yorkers will pass away. He said that 80% of patients put on a ventilator don't survive the treatment. Governor Cuomo said that different measures will impact the outcome differently. Wuhan just locked up its society, he said, and he doesn't know if that would work in America, as the U.S. has a totally different social structure. But he did announce further restrictions on the people of New York. We are going to close down the New York City playgrounds. He also said the U.S. is not being self-sustainable regarding the outbreak, criticizing medical supplies needed here are being produced abroad. Why are we shopping in China for basic medical supplies? He added that an emergency like this is likely to happen again and that in the future we need to be much better prepared. And thousands of retired nurses in Georgia asked to return. They are prepared to help solve the state's nursing shortage amid the fight against the CCP virus. Thousands of retired nurses in Georgia have asked to return to help fight the state's CCP virus problem. The state has almost 4,000 confirmed cases. Georgia had warned of a nursing shortage before the current crisis. It said the primary reasons were low salaries and recruitment not keeping pace with retirement. During the shortage, some nurses are being asked to work extra hours. Hospitals try to rotate them into different assignments, so they're not at increased risk from the CCP virus. But fears remain as they reuse protective gear. But now between 3,000 and 3,500 retired nurses are coming back. The state is also accepting both medical and non-medical volunteer staff. Due to lockdown measures around the world, places usually filled with people are now empty at what would normally be the busiest time of day. And European armies are taking new actions to stop the overcrowding of their hospitals. In a new trend, people have filmed places that are usually busy around the clock at midday. So far, nearly 830,000 people outside China have been infected with the CCP virus. And tragically, over 42,000 have already died. In an effort to stop further spread of the virus, many countries around the world have issued lockdowns and mandatory quarantines. Major cities and landmarks are now empty, even during one of the most busy times of the day. And the number of infections in Spain has reached over 100,000. Madrid's public transport buses were used by Spanish military to transfer CCP virus patients from congested hospitals to relieve them. The French army has taken similar actions. 38 critically ill virus patients were transferred by high-speed train from Paris to less overwhelmed regions. And as Austria directly borders on Italy, the country is stepping up its precautions. It is now mandatory to wear face masks while shopping in supermarkets. Some of Austria's other neighbors have introduced a more sweeping measure, making face masks compulsory as soon as you leave the house. In Costa Rica, farmers now have to destroy all kinds of beautiful flowers, which would usually have been sold to the U.S. 
The virus outbreak led to the suspension of flights to the U.S. and Canada, which are the biggest importers. William Quiroz, owner of a flower farm, estimates the Costa Rica sector lost $35 million because they couldn't sell their flowers. And in Europe, experts are setting standards for a future mobile app for tracking how the virus spreads. But if you are worried about your privacy, it's okay. The data will only be stored on your phone. NTD's Christian Watchin has the details. Today, European experts presenting a standard for apps that might help effectively interrupt further infections from the CCP virus without infringing on people's privacy. They say such an app is a way to bring life back to normal. To track infection chains via cell phones, some suggest centrally storing the GPS location data of almost the whole population. That's problematic in Europe because privacy law is very strict. And there are other risks too. Those data would be extremely attractive for criminals because location data in um, such a high granularity can be used for all kinds of criminal purposes. So if I were a criminal, the first thing I would try to do would be to hack that database. And governments might be able to abuse such a database too after the pandemic is over. <clears throat> a new app could instead use something called proximity tracing. You create local databases stored on each mobile phone and you do this by using the Bluetooth technology. Um, and it would actually even be more effective than the other way because Bluetooth data are more precise than GPS data. The app would save the proximity and duration of contacts between people. Later, after someone tests positive, everyone who is in contact with that person gets notified. It's an approach that has already worked in Singapore. The group hopes to develop an international standard many countries can adopt. The German Justice Department and the Federal Office for Data Protection said they support the development of this app. There was one key condition. The installation and use of the app must be voluntary. Christian Wottchen, NTD News, Berlin. The CCP virus is wrecking havoc on the U.S. economy, with Goldman Sachs predicting a 34 percent drop in GDP for the second quarter. A business owner in New York City lost almost all of her income. But she says a spiritual practice has helped her handle the crisis. NTD's Kevin Hogan has more. Over 3 million Americans filing for unemployment as the CCP virus strangles the U.S. economy. The St. Louis Fed Bank estimating 47 million will lose their jobs, and some economists saying this could happen this month. Virginia, a mother and owner of an antique furniture business in New York City, burdened by the shuttered economy. With the crisis, obviously, almost all of our income stopped coming in. You know, we were selling a very small fraction of the furniture that we had been selling, um, and obviously Airbnb completely died. Virginia living week to week with limited savings, and although New York City halted evictions, she's still unsure whether or not her rent will be pardoned. But her faith in a mind-body practice called Fallen Dafa has helped her overcome these challenges, as now she views difficulties as a way to grow spiritually. When we suffer, when we endure hardship, we eliminate karma and we gain something whereby we can return to a divine state, actually. She says she doesn't get sick very much and claims to have a strong immune system thanks to her practice. And when asked how someone can best protect themselves from the CCP virus, she said, One very good way that I know of would be to practice Falun Dafa. I really believe that it, it can help and it can protect you. After she and her husband both lost their sources of income, they left New York City because of the crisis and traveled to rural Quebec, two hours east of Montreal, to spend time with her parents in the countryside. Kevin Hogan, NTD News, New York. The virus pandemic is leaving many families devastated one way or another. These celebrities are donating to charities in efforts to help. As confirmed cases of the CCP virus continue rising globally, many celebrities are donating to coronavirus relief efforts. High school musical star Vanessa Hudgens donated to Feeding America. Kristen Bell, who voices Anna in Frozen, donated to No Kid Hungry. Pop star Ariana Grande is supporting Opportunity Fund, Give Directly, Feeding America and others. Singer Shawn Mendes donated to the Sick Kids Foundation. Actress Angelina Jolie donated to No Kid Hungry. Singer Selena Gomez is donating to the Music Cares Relief Fund to help struggling musicians because of the virus. Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively are donating to Feeding America and Food Banks Canada. Justin Timberlake donated to Mid-South Food Bank in his hometown, Memphis, Tennessee. 
Many other celebrities have donated and continue to donate every day. And if you would like to find out more about the Chinese regime's power struggle, we will be premiering Claws of the Red Dragon this Sunday, 9 p.m. here on this channel. The 54-minute dramatization by former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon delves into Chinese telecom giant Huawei's close ties to the Chinese regime and its goal of controlling 5G. Here at China In Focus, we bring you first-hand information from inside China. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates.